Welcome. My name is Ross, Ross Clark, the Mindful Coach, and today we're going to look at a new approach to stress, and the title is My Mindful Stress. So what we'll do is we'll look at the different aspects of my mindfulness and stress, and we'll have also a brief little stopping and dropping practice just to get a, a flavor of the training. So my my is to fully accept my stress as part of life. So this is my stress. It doesn't belong to Joe or to Bill. This is my stress. To move from that blaming and finding fault outside of ourselves to, ah, okay, this is my stress. The mindful is the ability to respond to stress rather than react to it. And so what I just demonstrated was actually a response to stress as opposed to reacting. So when we respond, then we are in a place of choice. We can recognize it, we can make choices around it, which is much different than just reacting, just being afraid of it and, and not being able to, to understand it and to work with it. Now, stress itself is just a natural part of, um, of life. So stress is oftentimes just imagined. So we can have it as being stress is a natural response to real or imagined danger. And this is where we can learn a lot about the power of our imagination and also about the power of mindfulness, how it will take and put things back into perspective for us. Anxiety. Anxiety is worrying about the real or ex imagined danger, whereas the stress is actually, we'll say I'm going to be presenting a speech in front of a lot of people. When I'm up there, I'm feeling the stress. But before having given the presentation, having given the speech, I might be worrying and worrying and just very anxious about it. So there's a difference between anxiety and stress. So we can look at stress is natural and anxiety is more optional. There's a lot we can do about anxiety. So, mindfulness. Mindfulness, this is the mindfulness triangle. And we can see that it starts with attention. So we pay attention to the stress, the stressor. And as best we can, we don't judge it. We just, ah, okay, there's tightness in my tummy. Oh, okay. And then we look at intention. Now, what? should I do? What can I do about this tightness? Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, well maybe what I can do is become grounded so that it doesn't bother me so much. And then maybe later I can reflect and, and see what's going on. Why is it that I'm getting this tightness in my, in my tummy? So they tell us now that our thoughts, we're thinking on average um, around 64,000 thoughts per day, and that's enough to fill a, a big book. Um, and they say that about three quarters of these thoughts are negative. So they have what we might consider a bit of a negative bias to them. And if we're not mindful, we can find that these typically negative, more negative thoughts can take us to a lot of emotions that are unpleasant and oftentimes they're not necessary. So this is a, a little stick figure of reacting. So we have a thought and an emotion. That's natural. This is just a normal day-to-day -day stressful event. We end up thinking more and more and more about it. What did they say? What did it mean? Um, I don't understand. They're not um, understanding me. So the emotion gets stronger and stronger. And then maybe after an hour of that, and after so many thoughts, the emotion has gotten really, really strong. This is a big challenge. This is a big challenge for us to, to deal with when it has gotten this strong. Now, responding is different. So responding, we would ah recognize, ah, I'm getting anxious. Ah, I'm thinking a lot. I'm actually overthinking. <gasps> okay, what can I do? I can become more grounded. So I send some of my attention to the posture of the body. And what that does is that breaks up the, the stress loops so that they're not as many and they're not as strong. 
Now, practice. We can practice this by looking at the practice of grounding, opening, and resting. But for this presentation, what we're most interested in is the grounding. The grounding in itself is a complete ex experience and a complete practice. The others are have different attributes that they bring to our whole um, opportunity of working with and understanding stress. So I'm going to just invite you just right now to have a little mini practice. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pay attention to the sounds around us. And right now I can hear the sound of the clock ticking. But I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to think about what time it is. I'm just recognizing that there's sound. And just letting the sound come to me. So this is helping me to stop the overthinking. And to come back into presence. Because that sound is happening right in the present moment. And next I can shift my attention to the sensations of posture. Being aware of where my feet are. Being aware of where my hands are. Being aware of my lips and tongue, just being aware of my mouth. And then I can choose to put my attention back more on the sounds. And then I can bring it back to the posture of the body finding my feet, finding my hands, finding my tongue. So that's just a little demonstration of stopping and dropping. It only takes a minute or two and it gives us an opportunity to kind of get rebalanced again, just to, <sighs> yeah, okay and to have a fresh start, so to speak. So grounding is more intentional, and grounding uh, is a practice that the more we practice it, the more benefit we get from it. And why do we ground? Well, we ground to rebalance our nervous system. Um, our nervous system is very uh, important, and it's central to, to everything that we do throughout the day. And... We could look at the nervous system as having two, two parts. We have the sympathetic nervous system, which is more fear-based. That's very, very quick. It comes on within a second, the sympathetic nervous system. And it's there to protect us. So that's why it has that fear-based component to it. Now, the parasympathetic, that is more of a love-based component to it. It's what nurtures us, and it makes us feel that everything is okay. The unfortunate part is it takes about... 10 to 20 minutes to reactivate the parasympathetic nervous system. And whereas this, the sympathetic, is within seconds. So we have to be very gentle with ourselves and not to expect too much of ourselves. And we can kind of get a sense of where we're at by just the rhythm of the breath. If the breath is quick and shallow, then we can pretty much be sure that we're in sympathetic mode. When the breath becomes longer and smoother, then we know that we're more in the parasympathetic mode. Now, when we look at the hierarchy of needs, we can see that this chart is broken up into three parts. Now, the first part is the grounding. Now, the purpose of this chart is to say that we as human beings need to have these lower needs met before we can go up to the next level. And so they've identified the base level as being grounding. So we need to have food and shelter. And we also need to feel safe. 
So unless we feel safe, we're not going to be able to very well move up or stay there very long in the next level of our of our um, complete being a human being. So grounding is there to be safe. That's to make us safe, to, be, to bring us back into that, that sensation of, of well-being. The opening is the psychological need. That is that opening, opening up our, our hearts, opening up our minds, just having that openness that, ah, yes, you know, this is workable. I can work with this. And then the resting is, that is the self-fulfillment where we start to really understand all these different aspects of ourselves. And we feel more content because we can see that we are pretty amazing, actually. And we start to understand that. The more we understand that, the less stress that we have. So it's, it's a beautiful way of looking at it. And these are the three practices that we do in mindful, my mindful stress. So the grounding, this would be an example of grounding. Grounding, we feel the posture of the body and we feel we get to know where our feet are. Uh, we have intentional breathing. We can use that breathing. The breathing is like a two-way street. So when we breathe in longer, that helps to invoke the parasympathetic nervous system. So that's a wonderful skill to develop. And then we notice the heart beating. When we notice the heart beating, we can pretty much tell that the parasympathetic system is well in place now. Uh, you know, our heart's open. Things are pretty good whenever we're that in the present moment, that grounded and open and that at rest. So the opening is, why do we open? Well, we open to rebalance our hormonal system. Uh, the opening is just that caring, that we, that we care. We care about ourselves. Um, so obviously one of the things we can do is smile. Smile is, is probably the quickest thing that we can do to help to reestablish and bring up our energy. So the hormonal system, again, has these generalized qualities of fear-based, which is cortisol and adrenaline. And then we have the dopamine and the serotonin, which are more love-based. And it's not that the cortisol is all bad and the dopamine is all good. It's more about balance. So we learn to have this nice balance because the cortisol helps our memory, helps us respond uh, quickly and well. And the dopamine gives us that sense of well-being, that sense of accomplishment. So both are important. But oftentimes, because we are overstressed or our stress has not been understood and, and dealt with, uh, we end up putting in far too much adrenaline and cortisol into our bloodstream. Uh, the opening, the opening, opening and smiling while we're still grounded. So we have ourselves still grounded. We can feel our posture. We can know where our feet are, our hands are. So we can also use a phrase of intention. We saw in the triangle that we have attention and intention. So we can suggest to the mind to help to guide it phrases of intention. May I smile. So opening and feeling, still grounded. And then if there's something that's on our mind, we can just offer a phrase of intention. May I let you be. May I let you be. I can always come back to it, but right now, may I just let you be. May I just let you go. So the resting is the third stage, and this, this would be later on in the course. Uh, our most um, essential and most important part is, is the grounding. So why rest? Well, we rest to heal and to understand. The understanding is really so wonderful. But in order to understand if our nervous system is, is out of balance and if our hormonal system are out of balance, we don't have all the same faculties available to us to really properly understand and reflect on, on what's happening. So we, again, have that stopping and dropping, stopping the overthinking, dropping back into the body, 
just feeling the posture of the body, opening and letting go, just opening up the mind and just as best we can, just letting go of whatever it is that seems to be there that's just repetitious. And breathing in, again, to invite the parasympathetic nervous system to start to rebalance and that intention of just letting go. Then we have the opportunity to drop into resting in awareness. Now, the resting in awareness, that's where we have that opportunity to reflect and, and better understand what it is that needs attention and how we can best give it that attention. So, in summary, we have the principles. The principles are to recognize our experience, so recognize whatever is stressful, whatever that stressful experience was, then to accept it. That's the my. This is my experience. This is my stress. Now we're at a place where we can do something about it. As long as we blame it on somebody or something else, then it's not going to change. We're not going to understand it. Once we accept it as being my, then we can start to better understand. So these are the principles that we work with to work with all of life experiences. So that's why there's this saying, mindfulness for life, because this allows us to work with all the different circumstances of our life. Now the practice that we mentioned was grounding, opening, and resting. Just grounding, opening, and resting. Nothing more complicated than that. And as I mentioned, the grounding really is, that's enough. If we just learn how to, to ground on a regular basis, that will um, that'll be so, so beneficial for us. And then the, the purpose, the purpose that these, these will give or will do for us is they have this ability to release, restore, and to reduce and what those are, we learn how to release stress. So I've had a hard day and things have been going not so good. Um, I come home, I just want to release that stress. I want to get rid of that stress in a healthy way. So that's the purpose, the first purpose of the grounding. The second purpose of opening is how I restore my energy. Uh, now I want to bring my energy up. I've got a whole night ahead of me. I want to be able to just enjoy and appreciate the rest of the evening. So that's where I use the practice of opening to raise my energy. And if I have an ongoing issue, it might be with another person or some other aspect, I just notice and I anticipate that this is going to happen again, then when I'm really grounded and open and I have the time, I can start to rest and uh, just reflect on, ah, why is it whenever I meet with such and such, I have this experience? So this is what we come to through the practice of my mindful stress. So thank you for your interest in this. And if you have any questions at all, please be in touch.